nobody down here either. Mary said she would be here. Now Strange what? how that door is wide open. Someone's definitely been living here. Do you think maybe something scared her off, or, or, or maybe they got to her? Don't go there, not yet. Remember this, with all these newspapers from fiance's murder. And Catherine's. Yeah. She seemed to be up on every detail about this case when I talked to her before, you know. I can't even get a signal down here. Well, she hasn't been gone long. No sign of a struggle. Well, maybe she just went to get something to eat. Let's hope. Every time you try to pry it open. Come on, Sigmund, please. This isn't exactly what I had planned. Well, you know, there's got to be a way out of here. It's a closet. All right, checked. Look, before we start getting crazy, you know, let's just give Mary some more time. What if she doesn't show? She'll show. You know, let's just take this opportunity to have a look around, see if we can find anything. Like a nice wine collection. Ha! Mary's got good taste. I'm in if you're in. Really? Really. I don't see any uh, cups or glasses around here, but. Well, you know what they say. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey, look at this. Pay steps from the hookup. Payroll? Yeah. Just one here circled in red for $75,000 made out to Nellie Beresford. I don't think I've ever heard that name before. I have. Where? Maybe just a coincidence, but Caitlin's friend from childhood. Her name was Nellie Beresford. She used to talk about her all the time. Do you think maybe Caitlin's sister, your FBI friend, do you think maybe she was using that name as a pseudonym? Maybe she was on the take, and, and, and that's why they killed her. I don't know. Well, there's much more in here that's going to help. No more references to your friend Catherine? You know, I don't know. I don't even know if that was a pseudonym for Catherine. You know, I don't know about any of this stuff. And I don't even know if that name was right. Why don't you take a break? I mean, relax, man. Jeez. <laughs> You're the one accusing me of being all about work and career and job and taking myself too seriously, but I can see clearly now. You have the same problem. Maybe. I mean, are you really all that dedicated, detective? Or is this just your way of not having to deal with other things? A little of both. But you know what? From what I've seen, I'm not half as obsessed as you are. <laughs> obsessed? Obsessed. About what? I don't know. Maybe you're 
hiding from something in your private life or maybe you're running from something And then he died. The next day? Uh, the day after I won my first case. My father did everything they told him to do to keep his heart beating so that he could see me be successful. You know? And um, I think, I guess after the verdict was announced, he decided that his job was done and that I would be okay if you left me alone, so. I'm sorry. Me too. I shouldn't open that second bottle of wine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, my father demanded so much out of me, and I just, I never wanted to disappoint him. He was a teacher, right? I'll never forget the first thing he ever taught me. He said that as a black woman, success was going to be three times as hard. So I just had to be three times as successful. I mean, don't get caught up in whether it's fair or not fair. Just concentrate on winning. That's a hell of an attitude. Yeah, it's not a bad way to look at things, actually. I mean, he knew that even one failure could cancel out every success you ever had. Because it happened to him. All those years he was teaching, he messed up one time. And they fired him. His career ended. His life was shattered. My parents' marriage went to hell. And you were all he had? He made me swear that I would never lose. It's a pretty heavy load to carry. Sometimes. I see him at old man too sometimes. He's always standing off to the left, you know, checking up on me, making sure I don't make no mistakes. The ghosts that will not go away. I don't think your father is the only ghost that won't go away. Caitlin's there too. Well, it's different. My, my dad's always wanted me to change, you know, be a better cop. And, wants me to stay the way I am. She doesn't want me to change. Ah, hello, my fool. It's me. I'm the one that doesn't want to change. <laughs> Quite a pair, aren't we? Neither one of us will allow ourselves even one mistake. Oh, yeah? Well... Here we are, locked in a basement, and I think that qualifies as one huge, huge mistake. <laughs> uh, you know, I won't tell if you won't tell. Yeah, pinky swear. Pinky swear. At least the company was good. <laughs>